turn with me to the Old Testament book of Numbers. And we're in Numbers tonight, chapter number 23, the Old Testament book of Numbers. And we're in Numbers chapter 23. In the book of Numbers chapter 23 tonight, we'll find here an unsaved man, an ungodly man, but even though this man is ungodly tonight, and even though this man is unsaved tonight, but here's something you'll find about this unsaved man. This unsaved man tonight, he's thinking. And he's thinking the right way. And even though this man's unsaved tonight, and even though this man tonight is ungodly, yet, friends, he's thinking along the right lanes. The right lanes that every unsaved person should be thinking. You know what this man's thinking about tonight? He's thinking about his death. It's good to think about your death tonight because that's one appointment you have. It's one appointment you will not run away from, and it's one appointment you will not escape. And that's death this evening. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 9, 27, it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this is the judgment. And this unsaved man and this ungodly man, he's thinking along the right lanes concerning his death. They wonder tonight, have you ever thought along these lanes tonight? Because here is a man tonight who's thinking about his death. And he's thinking about his death along the lines in which you should think about death tonight. Now, what does this man say? Numbers 23 and verse 10. You listen to what he says. Numbers 23, verse number 10. He says, Who can count the dust of Jacob and the number of the fourth part of Israel? Now, listen to what he says. Let me die the death of the righteous, and let my last end be like his. Now, let's what, listen to what this man's pleading for tonight. He says, let me die the death of the righteous. Let my last end be as his. You know what this man's saying in Ulster language? This is what he's saying in Ulster language. Like, Let me die the death of the Christian. Let me die the death of the saved. Let my last end be like theirs. That's how he's thinking about death tonight. Here's a man tonight, an ungodly, an unsaved man in the book of Numbers, chapter 23, verse 10, and he wants to die the death of a Christian. Sure, you want to die the death of a Christian love. Sure, you want to die the death of the saved, sir. Even though this man's ungodly, even though this man's unsaved, in his heart he knows he has to die. And in his heart he wants to die right. You want to die right, love? Let me die the death of the righteous. Let my last end be as him. Do you know what was wrong with this man in Numbers 23? He's just like so many men in the kingdom of Morn. He was a man who wanted to die right, but he wasn't prepared to live right. Do you know the big problem today? 
The big problem is, oh, everybody wants the Christian's death, but they don't want the Christian's life. They don't want to live like the Christian whole, but they want to die like the Christian. Do you know what the unsaved know? Do you know what the unsaved believe? And you know this, love, and you know it, sir. When a Christian dies, you know it's well with their soul. You know when a saved person dies, whether that person's a man or a woman, young or old, that the death of the saved means heaven. And so you don't want to go to hell, do you? Do you? And you don't want to go to hell, sir. Let me die the death of the righteous, that my last end, he said, be like his. Let me tell you something about Balaam tonight, what makes him like so many people in the kingdom of Mourn. Balaam wasn't a heathen. In fact, Balaam knew all about God. You read the book of Numbers chapter 22, the previous chapter, you'll find where Balaam speaks to God and where God speaks to Balaam. Balaam wasn't a heathen. You see, there's many in the kingdom of more like Balaam tonight. Oh, boys, they want to die, right? Oh, they want the Christian's death, and they want the Christian's burial too, and they want the Christian funeral. Man, they want the death of the saved, and they want the funeral of the saved, and they want the burial of the saved. But they don't want the saved life. They don't want the Christian's life. But here's a man in Luke, sorry, in, in Numbers 20, 23, verse 10, a man who wants to die right. But there's three things Balaam refused to do. You know the first thing Balaam refused to do? Balaam failed to recognize his own stupidity. You see, in the book of Numbers chapter 22, you'll read a man by the name of Balak comes to Balaam, and he asked Balaam to go with him to curse the people of God. And Balaam goes to God, and he prays to God, and God says, Thou shalt not go with these men. But Balaam, friend, wasn't happy. Because when Balak came back the second time, friend, God, de God declared to him what must and what must be done. And now listen, child of God, it's a sin to go against God. Listen tonight, listen, we need to get this into our heads. Do you see your Bible? Your Bible is more than a Bible. Your Bible is more than a Bible, dear. Do you know what your Bible is? Your Bible is the living Word of God. Your Bible is holy scriptures that are able to make you wise unto salvation. That's what the Bible is. And the Bible teaches us and the Bible warns us that there's things that God don't want, doesn't want you to do. And that's sin today. Go against what God says. Well, Balaam was prepared to go against what God says. Listen, any person think that goes against what God said, stupid. And Balaam went, friends, to a certain place against God's warning. You know what Numbers chapter 22 and verse 22 says? It says that God's anger was kindled against him because he went. Don't you think it's a light thing tonight to reject the Word of God? Don't you think it a light thing tonight to turn your back on the pleadings of God, the Holy Ghost, when God strikes with you and strives with you just the way he's through with Willie? And God starts to speak, and God starts to trouble you, and you start to think things that you never thought about before, and you start to feel things that you never felt before. Don't you, friend, neglect the strivings of God. 
As well he quoted tonight, my spirit shall not always strive with man. And Balaam was a man who failed to recognize his own stupidity. You know what the Bible says in 2 Peter 2, verse 15 about Balaam? That Balaam loved, he loved the wages of unrighteousness. You know what so many people fail to realize tonight? People fail, fail to realize tonight that the wages of sin is death. Let me tell you, friend, tonight, the wages of sin is death. And we're not talking about death in a coffin. We're talking about the eternal death. And here's a man tonight who wants to die right, who wants to die the death of the Christian, who wants to die the death of the saved. But he neglects and he forsakes God's warning. Many times in these years have you heard God's voice. Many times have you been troubled over your sin. And many sleepless nights have you ever experienced in your days. Did you turn your back on the merciful pleadings of God? Balaam failed to recognize his own stupidity. You know something else about Balaam? You'll read in the 22nd chapter, God tried to stop him three times from going his way. Three times God stopped him on the wrong road. Three times God stood in his way. You know, dear unsafe friend tonight, God stands in your way at times, and sometimes God puts you into a bed of sickness to stop you from going to hell. And sometimes God does terrible things to try and get you to see sense. Three times God tried to stop this man. Wonder many times God tried to stop you. He failed to recognize his own stupidity. Now, what's the second thing he refused to do? I'll tell you what he refused to do, what every sinner refuses to do. Not only did this man, freaks, not only did he tonight refuse to re recognize his own stupidity, he refused to repent from his own sin. Even though, friend, God tried to stop him three times, Balaam couldn't be stopped. You know, we have a loving God tonight, friends. We have a loving God. You know what the Bible says tonight? God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Listen, you look to Calvary's cross tonight and see God's love. See the bleeding, dying form of one that he hung on Calvary's cross for your sin and for mine. And listen to your own safe friend. The Bible says in 2 Peter 3 and 9 that he's not willing that any should perish, but that you should come to repentance. And no matter what any person tells your friend tonight, there needs to be repentance of sin or there's no salvation. There has to be repentance. There has to be the turnaround. There has to be repentance. The Lord Jesus says, With, except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Ah, but Balaam wouldn't repent. Many times, dear unsafe friend, has God spoke to you, and God has showed you, and God has pleaded with you, but you wouldn't repent. 
What does God say in Ezekiel 18, 23? Do you know what God says in Ezekiel 18, 23? Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, and not that they should return from his ways and live? Ah, but Balaam wouldn't return from his ways and live. Ah, but neither will you, sir. That's why you're not saved yet. I'm telling you something now, friends. Here's a man that wanted to die right. Here's a man that wanted to die right. Here's a man that wanted to die the death of a Christian, wanted to die the death of the saved. But he wasn't prepared to obey God. What does the Scripture say? What shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? You ever think about that question? It, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? Friend, you ever think about your end tonight? Because you remember this man thought about his end. And let me die the death of righteous. Let my end be like his. But this man wouldn't repent. This man couldn't be stopped, friend. Even though he wanted to die the death of the righteous, he couldn't be stopped. Do you know, friend, the third and final thing this man failed to remember? He failed to recognize his own stupidity. He failed to repent from his sin. He refused and he refailed to remember his own soul. It's a very serious thought to me. He failed to recognize his own stupidity. He failed to repent from his sin. And he failed to me to recognize his own soul. And there came a time in his life that God let him go on. And God never stopped him again. You know what you'll read about Balaam? Balaam's wish wasn't granted. Balaam's prayer wasn't answered. Balaam perished with the enemies of God. You know, friend, Balaam's a warning to us all tonight. You might want to die the Christian death, and you might want to die the death of the seer. But that choice is yours this evening. I hear people saying, oh, there's someone to be said about a sudden death. There's something about dying in your sleep. I'll tell you something about sudden death tonight. Sudden death doesn't give you a chance to repent. A sudden death doesn't give you time to get saved. And you're sitting in this meeting tonight and God's given you an opportunity to do what Balaam didn't do. You're on the broad road like Balaam tonight. And how many times over your life has God tried to stop you from going down that wrong road? How many times has God spoken to you about your sin and you still haven't repented? And how many times has God told you about your son and you still turn your back on him? Who in this meeting tonight yet still fails to remember their soul that one day will be summoned before God? And you're not saved tonight. Here's a man who prayed that he would die right, but he perished. It's one thing tonight wanting to die right. But it's your choice. What you do to me.
with Christ, who alone can save. Wonder if there's a funeral here this week. And whoever's coffin is at the front of the church tonight, whoever it may be, may be able to look down upon that coffin from this reading desk and say that person died the death of the righteous. Remind you, that coffin could be yours. Let's bow in a wee word of prayer. Lord, we know tonight that we all face death. We know tonight that everybody wants to die right, Lord, and be in heaven. But we realize, Lord, tonight man's greatest problem is his sin. But we thank you, Lord, tonight that the Lord Jesus is the one who died to save us from our sin. We earnestly pray, Lord, tonight that the simplicity of this message will be the driving force that will bring some soul to that place of repentance and trust the Savior. And Lord, we leave the eternal issues of this meeting with Thee. Lord, we do. In our Savior's name. Amen.